Hey guys, William Inferno here today with the, another recap from Season 2. This time we're going to be taking a look at Arc 2, Chapter Alpha. I'm recording here because my office is kind of messy right now, which is upstairs. And I've had to remove a lot of things from my incredibly messy desk and uh, the figurine, the <laughs> figurine, the character shelf over there because I am, I've just started filming Chapter Omega, if that wasn't clear with the cryptic video I made like a week ago. There's, there's a mess, there's a mess everywhere. I apologize for the mess. Let's get into it. So I just want to preface that with Chapter Alpha, um, it was kind of a late addition into the script actually. The season was originally going to be 11 episodes. And then I uh, recovered some old, like an old journal that I had back from seventh and eighth grade where I actually re rewrote Origin. Um, I had this weird passion to do like a fan fiction for my own thing. And so I actually rewrote Origin um, like the first episode of events where we have, you know, Preston's early life with Abigail and Von Ness. I rewrote like a ton of that in my old journal and I read over it and I was like, this actually would be kind of cool if I could fit this into season two somehow to give more depth and more explanation to like what actually happened. Because let's be honest, Origin was made by 11 year old me and 11 year old me, although fun, <laughs> I want to say, um, had cool ideas, the execution was that of an 11 year old so I want to do it I want to do it over again make it more cinematic make it the writing much better and all that um, and so that's kind of where this came into play so I, I believe chapter alpha episodes uh, 5 and 6 were actually the last things to be scripted so everything um, 7 episodes 7 through 13 originally were gonna be episodes 5 through 11 so so instead of going through the episode the, the two episodes chronologically I'm going to talk about the characters because the characters are actually the main point of this. It's not necessarily like the chronological time of events that happens in this. It's more about going into each main character of my series now and exploring who they were when they were younger. And so I'll start off with Makuro. I like how we got to see more of how he sort of filled in for the absent law enforcement. Um, Niveo City is a very poor, poor city. They, they couldn't afford like really good uh, law enforcement, police force, or anything like that. So Makuro was that dude who just thought, well, I'll be a vigilante, I'll take the law into my own hands, and befriended Preston and Abigail and Von Ness along the way. You know, we kind of we kind of got the intro to why Makuro was so heroic back in episode one of season two, when we realized that the Akiyama Stone crashed and it hit him and it gave him this heroic vision of just, you know, standing up for others and, and being this, this light. And so that's sort of why he is the way he is in Chapter Alpha and in Origin and all that and how he becomes a big part of the hero factory. And then we get to see Rotor and the other villains kind of go against him and, and the reason I focus on Rotor so much is because he's a main character now, he's Vortex now. And there is one moment, I forget exactly what which, which villain is talking, I want to say it's Meltdown or Thunder or, or something. Um, and they're talking about how they feel bad for Von Ness because he's such a young kid and he's being pulled into this. And the shot zooms in on Rotor while this other villain is talking, and that's because Rotor realizes that he's just not a villain at heart. He's not evil at heart, and so that's kind of, you know, as we see him progress throughout my universe, he becomes Vortex in the end. Darren and Alexis, we basically just, it, they don't have a ton of depth in these episodes. We just get to see more of um, them be siblings before everything happened. Um, and we said they're kind of like kept together. They're more like the anti-social siblings that moved to New Veo City after a long time. Um, and they don't like it there. They're, they just don't like connecting with other people pretty much. So um, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot with them, but they were nice to see and write. Stringer didn't have too much depth in this either, but it's good to know that he was around and was sort of friends with everyone before the Hero Factory was established. And so Stormer already knew Stringer so he could recruit Stringer, you know, all that stuff. So that, that's nice to see. Now ex exploring the young Preston was actually the main point of this journal that I mentioned earlier. Um, it was basically a whole story about Preston. Now in my, in my story, in my fiction, um, there was actually a much grander scale like devastation in Nuvia City where Stormer was running through and there was water pouring in, there was a huge flood. It was really like an apocalypse type story. I didn't get to do that here just because of budgetary and just you know, reasons that I can't physically pull that off, but I put a ton of elements of Preston into this. You know, he, I wanted to give him the backstory. He has, a, he has a mother who works like three jobs. His dad, you know, is in the military. I didn't mention that, 
but it was mentioned in I think Origin Season 3. His dad was in the military. His brother Duke, which is actually Duncan Bulk, ran off when he was young to go into the military as well. So his family is kind of torn apart, and so he has Von Ness and Abigail sort of to ground him. And so I wanted to I wanted to give them more moments together to kind of ground them as a friend group, which was really nice to explore. It's also nice to explain how Detrax got a sample of his genetics to use for Biohero, so I wanted to do that as well. With Von Ness, I liked showing how Von Ness was like a super troubled character. Like, there's people like this. There's people who just, like, their their family life, their home life is just not great. And although I understand that an evil entity is not going to come to those people and recruit them to lead a band of henchbots to destroy a city, I understand that that part's not realistic. That part is simply for entertainment and drama purposes. But there are people who have sucky family lives and all they want is to like be paid attention to in some way or another and so Von Ness runs across Detrax or I, I should say Detrax runs across Von Ness knows how to play into what Von Ness wants and sort of recruits him so I understand it's a stretch to say it's realistic because it's not really but these the ground the base level of these characters I wanted to make realistic like not every high schooler is from the suburbs lives a normal family life not everyone is like that and so i wanted to kind of show that in this and i again i get i get it they're robots this is like a drama and an action series and but i think you get what i'm trying to say anyway moving on we get to abigail now abigail's always been kind of a weird character because i never really made her a likable character it's not that people like c couldn't like her it's just that there wasn't like any depth to her she was just a friend of stormers and that's all we knew there was like no emotional background so when there, there came to be moments in evolution and all that where it's like oh Stormer's missing his friend you can't really care for that because Abigail wasn't really like developed at all and so I've always thought Abigail sort of was like a super glue to this original friend group and so I wanted to play into that she's kind of like holding Von Ness and Preston together I feel like Von Ness and Preston they wouldn't be friends if it weren't for Abigail you know they're kind of they're kind of all opposites. They're like three sides of a triangle, and they only work together. And so that's kind of how this is. Um, I, you know, she's she's someone who's able to see both sides of a situation, but but she's ultimately more of a protagonistic like character. So she obviously sides with Makuro, unlike Von Ness. And so it's also kind of a big thing to note that Von Ness is the reason Abigail truly died. Like Von Ness walks into the room that she's surviving in pulls the plug on her essentially because he's just angry at this point you know he's just he can't have Abigail knowing or saying anything and it's it's what tips him over the line essentially Xenix was not a nice guy to Von Ness not a nice brother at all he's never really been truly a, a, a good kind-hearted character and he's still not a nice guy in general today and these two episodes gave me the ability to explore his ways of betrayal you know, he, he obeys Detrax because he knows he can be more powerful than Detrax if he really wanted to be. As he leaves the planet, you know, he, he leaves the planet he and Zarin are surviving on. He says he's going to tell Zarin if he finds a way out. He doesn't tell Zarin because he's, he's, he's only in it for himself. He just wants to better himself. He's a follower, but, but like in truth, he's really just out for himself. And I also wanted to explain why Xenix and Biohero share, share the same mask. I know it's not a huge thing, but like I remember when I first came out with Xenix, they're like, is there a reason that Biohero and Xenix have the same mask? So I thought, hey, what if like Biohero was wearing Xenix's childhood face all along? I thought that would be super ironic, and I kind of love the idea, so I put it in season two, you know? Uh, so there you have it for Xenix. The last character that I want to focus on is Detrax. Now these two episodes are chronologically the first time we actually see Detrax being more like he is like today. Um, his main goal throughout the timeline of these episodes is to construct Biohero. But I think these also show his ability to like win people to his side. You know, he his these two episodes he's just recruiting and recruiting, you know? Um, he appeals to what they really want. That's his thing. He goes to them and he's like, hey, what do you want? What is your goal in life? I will give that to you. Um, all I ask is for your allegiance. That's basically what the, the type of person that he is. Core Hunter, an adequate mission that fit his skill set. He gave Marlex a job that tailored to his likings of technology and all that. He gave Von Ness a position of attention and power. And he gave Xenix an objective that involved taking out his own brother. 
So Detrax is essentially manipulative, and I, these two episodes really nail that in from the start now. And so that's those are the characters that I wanted to talk about in this episode, in, or in this recap, and that's kind of all I have for you today. Um, we're going to get into Arc 3 real soon. Uh, I believe Episode 7 is scheduled for Saturday, March 2nd, so in a couple weeks, as soon as this comes out, it'll probably be the week after Episode 6, so two weeks from when this comes out, um, Episode 7 should be coming out. Next week, I'll have a little preview of the whole arc for you. Nothing's going to be the same after Arc 3. Arc 3 is pivotal, uh, and things are really going to get crazy now, so... Be ready for Arc 3, it's going to be insane. Okay, well, that is it for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you did, I know these recaps aren't super popular, but I want to do them anyway just to, you know, catch everyone back up. See you guys next time.